Hi there, my name is Betsy Kling. I'm the Chief Meteorologist here at 3 News. I'm also the 5 o'clock anchor, and I use STEAM every single day of my life. STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math all come together in meteorology. Meteorology is known as a science of sciences. What I mean by that, when you're studying meteorology, you're studying the weather, you're actually studying the motions of the atmosphere. So physics comes out of that. Physics is a science of math, one of them at least. Not only do I have to know physics and how the atmosphere moves, but I need to know the chemistry of the atmosphere and how that changes as the weather changes. I also have to know about where all of the weather is happening. So geography is a very big deal. I have to know a little bit about geology because when it rains, that rain then percolates down and it goes into our rivers and streams and whatnot. And of course, Great Lake Erie. Um, and then beyond that, we also have to know a little bit about biology, how plants can suck up the water. We don't get flooding that way. Or we could have uh, evapotranspiration taking place. That's when corn releases water into the atmosphere. So, STEAM is a very important part of what I do, not only in the actual science of meteorology, but in the supporting sciences that allow me to be a broadcast meteorologist on television. Computers are a part of my life that I cannot do without now, not just in the format of getting data and turning data around, but making graphics that you're gonna see on television during 3 News. So when you are kind of sitting around thinking about, mm, what can I do today? Maybe get on the internet and look around. See if you can find a satellite picture. What's that satellite showing you? What type of clouds are they? How are they moving? What does that mean to the forecast? How does Chicago's weather compare to ours? These are all just little things you can do to get a little bit better acquainted with meteorology. I would do it. I do it every day. And I think it's kind of cool. Well, now I'm going to turn things back over to your library for the Cuyahoga County Public Library with a little bit more on this week's challenge. Hi everybody, I'm Mr. Matt, and I've got my helper, Owen, here. Hi. Hi. And we're here to do this week's STEAM challenge. So, this week's challenge is all about time. Oh, do you know what time it is? No, I don't have a watch on. You don't have a watch on. So how are we going to tell time? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Ah, did you know that you can tell time based on the position of the sun? We just need a tool that's going to be able to tell us what time it is from the sun. Do you know what that tool is called? Sundial. It is called a sundial. Exactly. A sundial's been around since ancient times. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell time based on the position of the shadows cast by the sun. Does that sound pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are we going to use to build our sundial? We've got some very simple materials. Um, we can build it very easily. Mm -hmm. So what do we have, Oh, A uh, compass. So we have a compass. So we our sundial, because we're in the northern hemisphere, our sundial needs to be facing north. So we need to be able to tell which direction is north. If you don't have a compass, you can also use the compass app on your smartphone or your device. Um, so we do need to know which way north is. Okay, so what else do we have? Uh, paper plates. We have a basic paper plate, and you could use any kind of flat disc or surface. So in our case, we're going to use a paper plate. What else do we need? A uh, ruler. We have a basic ruler. So we're going um, to try to figure out where our angles are uh, on our sundial. We'll show you how to do that in just a second. And then what else do we need? A uh, pencil. We need a pencil or a pokey stick for our sundial. 